Swaziland, one of Africa's oldest monarchies. Tonight on special assignment, we journey to the royal palace to meet three of the wives of King Mswati III, women who despite their education and independence still embrace traditional ways. He spotted me at the red dance. I was singing in a choir, school choir. <laughs> I guess he was impressed with my doors. <laughs> it happened that I was there. I had gone to Pongo and I met the king. Swaziland, a nation where tradition is deeply rooted and respected. This tiny kingdom is ruled by King Mswati III, side by side with Indro Bukati, the Queen Mother. Despite calls to modernize, the monarchy is not much different from the dynasties of the past. And like many of his ancestors, King Mswati III has married several times. Umshanga, the red dance, is one of Swaziland's oldest ceremonies. To prepare themselves, maidens camp out in the fields for a week. There they cut their reeds and practice the ancient rituals of becoming a woman. A day before the event, the reeds are delivered to the Queen Mother at the Lutzitzini Royal Palace. They are used to build traditional windbreakers and hearts. The red dance usually takes place once a year, at the beginning of spring. Maidens celebrate their virginity in front of the Swazi nation and pay homage to the king. Om Sangha is uh, an event which uh, all in the olden days, that's where the young girls would come and uh, participate uh, because they are showing love and tradition to the culture. Myth has it that the king chooses his wife at the red dance, but this is not always the case. Uh, it's not as if that's where the king uh, normally uh, gets uh, his wives or so. A red dance is just supposed to be a red dance. I don't know that he's supposed to choose a wife at every red dance because he doesn't choose a wife at every red dance. Otherwise, now he would have, let me see how many wives, about 14. <laughs> It should be somewhere where they'll be able to meet other kids and enjoy themselves. Because also, the Mklanga is for a purpose. The Mklanga is for celebrating the virginity of the maidens and for celebrating youth and, and for paying homage to, to our rulers. King Mswati has seven wives and a fiancé. The wife-to-be still takes part in the dance. Only when she conceives will she become the king's wife. Really enjoy yourself. It's like a girl's night out, you know? <laughs> but with them it's a weekend. For them it's an outing. It's a weekend out. You go, you dance, you have fun, you, you, you sleep together with these whole lot of other people from mm -hmm. everywhere. It, it's a get-together mm -hmm. of some kind. It was quite fascinating because it was my first, first, first Umshlana when I was taken as the king's fiancé. Personally, I've never attended Umshlana Redance yes, as a maiden. I've only participated now that I am a wife to the king. Mm -hmm. 
According to Swazi tradition, the king's first two wives are traditional wives. They are presented to him by the Mota and Matebula clans, and he has very little say in the matter. At the age of 32, he already has seven wives. Some people can take it like it's tradition, he has to do it. But well, I don't know in the future with the, all the modern and the, the values, but um, so far I think uh, it's okay. <laughs> but I think he's comfortable with it too. <laughs> and uh, are your wives comfortable with it? Uh, so far I am. And I don't know about the others, but I am. <laughs> Coming from a monogamous family, I think it, at first it was, it was something new. It was definitely it was something new to me. But because I knew when I arrived that the king already had three, four, in fact, four wives ahead of me. So I knew what, what the situation was. You do go through stages uh, before you actually reach a, a point where you feel you're coping. You go through certain stages, you, you do certain things, and you, you experiment, you know, you want to find out, okay, if I, if I do things this way, how will it feel if I do things this way? So uh, I'm one of those who has been able to go through all kinds of stages, and I have been able to reach a point where I think, okay, if I look at it this way, I can live with it. When Queen Delifa Magwaza married the king, she had to find ways to cope with being wife number six. I can say that was quite um, a, a dramatic change, you know, like uh, growing up, you know, in the modern, you know, like home, and all of a sudden everything changed somehow. But right now I feel maybe it was a lesson somehow to be made stronger, you know, to be able to cope. I am in a situation, and a situation which I would like to think is not an ordinary one. And if I keep my mind off thinking about the situation I'm in and rather enjoy myself and do things I feel I'm good at or things I feel can benefit other people, then it, it enriches my life. Time helped me to adjust. It, it was quite um, a different situation, I mean, from where I came from and all of a sudden having all these bodyguards and having rules and and restrictions. With my artwork and, uh, and the designing, you know, I'm always occupied. Queen Namagwaza showed us her art exhibition. Keeping busy is one of the ways these queens cope with life as a royal. <laughs> Charity work plays a vital role in the lives of these queens. It is a day on which we recognize significant roles played by our women in society. I myself, I'm not just sitting and being mm -hmm. idle. You know, I'm trying to make an example to them. So I guess the inspiration comes from uh, trying, you know, to, to see the need that people should be hardworking. There's a lot that I do myself. I design when I find time. I design and then I do bead work. I also uh, do um, a bit of artwork, drawing and painting. Also, at the same time, you have to attend to public functions. You have to attend to people who need to, you need to have an audience with you. So my final word of gratitude goes to all you who have helped, who have helped to make this a special night and whose contributions will help to give many Swazi children the blessing of education. And sometimes you find that there's a lot of state visits that you have to attend to. The king goes away to to stay visit, so there's a lot that I do. My charity work, and a lot of people come to me for different reasons. Sometimes empowerment, 
who they want me to assist them in certain things. There are still areas in which our nation's women are not able to contribute as much as they might towards the kingdom's development. I have so many functions to attend, and uh, in my spare time I sing. He's the very stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? When my enemies attack me, when evil men advance against me, I shall not fear. Leave it first. A lot of people are skeptical, you know, about mm, how can she lower herself to, this, to that standard, and how can how can she just how can our queen sing? You know, it's really it sounded ridiculous to them. I believe Christians are very excited because it's it's so good when you know that people who are your leaders uh, are leading a certain example for them. It's, it was a lot that I could actually stand up and say, um, I'm a Christian, I can, I can preach the gospel because I believe singing gospel music, you're just preaching through song. Hallelujah, he will see you through. Thank you, Jesus. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, with immense humility, I wish to express my profound gratitude to His Majesty for his presence here tonight, as well as for his unwavering support towards my zealous endeavors, regardless of what people may say, think, or do. Your Majesty, you are by all means the wind beneath my wings. His public display of affection for the king was not well received in the palace. At first, you know, there was maybe that obligation to have to do what you are expected to do. You know. But as time goes on, you grow, you mature, and you realize what makes you happy and what makes you unhappy. And as they usually say, you can't please everybody, so you might as well please yourself. You know? <laughs> He's, he's a king, but also he's my husband. Um, I guess uh, it does call for, you know, being able to express yourself, you know. Mm. Because there comes a time where you just sit and talk, you know. So I guess, yeah, there comes a time. If I'm not happy, I guess it's the best way to say I'm not happy. Mm. It's just like any other uh, married couple is. He is very understanding. I mean, if you think that he is understanding to the whole country, then it should be simple, you know, understanding his own problems with the, his family. Yes, I never find a problem relating to him because, especially because we've been together for 13 years now, so it's a long time. Yes, I, I know him very well, and he is a normal person. All of them are the same. There's nothing uh, special about any particular one. and. Uh, as you mentioned, they are all lovely. That's it. Uh, so I just like it's like any other marriage. Uh, however, you you know you you continue to live with the, in that particular marriage. That's how I live with my family. Seven queens, one king. Do they all get along? One big happy family. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I think when we're together, you know which I find happens not so much anymore, we are able to get along. There, there really isn't much conflict while we're together. Maybe sometimes we do have small differences, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to you know, reconcile, you know, because now and again we have to meet you know, uh, for certain occasions. So I guess it, it calls for that we have to be a close family and you know, interact you know, in a manner where people will uh, we'll feel comfortable, you know, not like uh, we are rivals in the family. We all share one interest, you know? We love the country and we love one man. So we try to support each other, I believe. We are one big family. The competition part of it, this bound to be, you know, it's just that I wouldn't, I, I feel, some people look up to certain people whether they want to admit it or not. And 
Sometimes if somebody does something, you'll think, hmm, that's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe uh, let me try that. Some people might think, you know, when you look at the whatever, you might think it's a competition. But to me, I feel that uh, it's no competition. I do what I want, what I do best, mm -hmm. and the next person does what she feels, you know, mm -hmm. is good for her. I don't see the need for competition because we all have uh, our organizations we work with. We all have our work. So there is, there's really no room for competition. We aren't the same. For, for myself, I like to set standards for myself. I like to tell myself, okay, I want to achieve this. Mm -hmm. Not because I've seen somebody else who has, but because I want to. Mm -hmm. And instead, my inspiration are my family. My parents, they, they're still studying even today. Mm -hmm. My brothers, you know, I feel, you know, I come from a well-educated family, so why should I be any different? With me, it's not like I'm competing or with them or whatever, but I just, I just like to feel, you know, we're in the same league. I am in my path. I know what I want. I have my goals. I have my dreams. I just concentrate on what I want to do. <laughs> Well, whenever he's around, you know, he, he does, you know, give himself the time of, you no, know, maybe calling them and, you know, talking to them and you know, whatever he can do with the whilst, you know, he's, ha he's having them around. I guess they, they do have that he's the king, you know, like, <laughs> so sometimes it's not, they're not so free, you know, like when they're with me. The queens don't live with the king. They stay in different palaces with their children. They have a very good relationship. They can go to the king and say, um, Your Majesty. The, the most important thing is the respect. They know that they have to respect the king, that they do understand he is their father, but they know that they cannot address him as daddy. And I think they love him a lot. They look up to him. We, we relate quite easily because I think he is a very humble person, his kind. How do you relate with your father, the king? We only get to talk on the most few occasions. Mm -hmm. and that's when he comes to my house, and then if he's not busy, because he's usually with people, but it's, it's quite OK. Does it affect you that you don't see him so often? Not really, because I'm not used to it. I have to make sure my kids are instilled with the correct morals. I have to discipline them. I have to love them at the same time. There must know the difference between right and wrong. I have to instill in them godly fear, as my parents did in me. As they grow up, I guess it's up to me, you know, how to teach them, you know, what, what that is expected from them. Because I guess they have to have it at the back of their mind that somehow they are different, you know, because they have to represent who they are, you know. Because as a princess, I guess people, they have to come forward, you know, like a princess, so I guess uh, with that in mind, I guess, they'll, they'll grow up and learn. I feel it's important that they learn how to do things for themselves. Yes, it's important to be independent, to know how to do things for yourself and not rely yes, to somebody. Well, I'm used to having guards around me, but not people around me. Mm -hmm. It's, like, uncomfortable. Some people talk about me bad things, and I don't like it, but I just don't think about them. I just try focusing on what I'm supposed to do. I know that my daughter doesn't like, you know, being guarded every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, uh, she has complained. Mm -hmm. My children don't have a problem be because of their status. I find they are able to, to live with other kids and make friends and interact with everybody because I, I teach them certain values and I always teach them self-respect that they should respect themselves and they should respect the next person. If you attend a public function, that's fine. It's okay for people to see you. But if you mean going into a shopping mall and into a shop to buy clothes when people are there, 
it, it's a different story because you feel very uncomfortable. When we travel, it's fine because especially out of the country, not that many people know you. So you feel very comfortable because you can shop and you can mix with the people and they don't know who you are. But we still mix tradition and, uh, and modern living because we maintain the traditional attire. We wear that whenever we go public, whenever we attend any cultural events, and we still speak the Siswati language, which is very important to maintain your language. You know, when you're educated, you're able to look further than a person who's uneducated, usually. You, you're able to look at something and analyze it and think of the repercussions from different points of view. You, your, your mind, you know, it just widens. Nowadays, um, with the technology and science, they need to be aware of what's happening all around them. They mustn't just sit and be idle and think, oh, I'm having everything here, so why not sit and do nothing? One day they'll be out there and they want to, to, to defend themselves, you know. I think once you have education, you're given the platform where you feel you can, you know, try anything. He will make me successful in all that I do. He can do the same for you. He can do the same for you too. I think it's just best to tell yourself, live your life. Live your life. You know, when is there fine, when is not fine. You know? Don't even bother about where he is or what he's doing. It's okay, that's his business. You've got your own business as well. Tell yourself, it's not like in an ordinary marriage where you, you say you, you join together, that where, where, where to become one, that is. Instead, to don't become one. I become one and he becomes whatever. At first it was hard, I must admit. It was hard, but I guess with the experience and maturity, I've learned you know, to be able to uh, to cope. All I can say is that I'm content. Ten years ago, I wasn't, I wouldn't have the same thoughts. But now it's it's life. To me, it's life, and I've accepted it. And I think I am very comfortable the way I am living. People can understand our tradition and the culture. That uh, the Swazi nation. This is how they live. Uh, this is one thing which makes us unique uh, in many, many countries since we have uh, preserved our traditions and culture.